what makes America the greatest country in the world. Soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen. Stood up for what was right. First step in solving any problem is recognizing there is one. It's time to start a trip. Green isn't something we talk about. All we can ever do for our heroes is remember them. And they gave up two lives. The one they were living in and the one they would have lived. They gave up everything for our country, for us. Let's pray for freedom and justice. Only be a war if soldiers are willing to fight. Less than 1% of Americans serving in uniform. Some veterans not getting the time they care that they need. The good news is, is that in recent years, we've made historic investments what is it? Why should we care? We should care about press freedom because... Because we were informed. In democratic societies, free, diverse, and pluralist media enable public debates and are essential checks on power. You don't look power. satisfied. Let's discuss. Hey guys, how's it going? What's going on? New episode uh, about uh, lumbosacral or cervical strain. And uh, as you know, uh, VA gives um, every veteran who applies for benefits a disability rating. So this rating ranges from 0 to 100 and indicates the occupational limitations that soldier may have due to an active military duty. So the higher your VA rating, the more you may be able to receive a monthly compensation. And um, today we are talking about those spinal conditions and you can find them under 4.71 schedule of rating uh, musculoskeletal systems and depends where you're at, depends how much compensation you get. So we will try to lay down all, uh, all uh, dysfunctions that you may have in your spine and how much you may be able to get for that. Mm. So for spinal conditions such as a uh, cervical strain, uh, spinal stenosis, uh, spinal fusion and vertebral dislocation, the VA will use the general rating formula for disease and injuries of the spine and to determine the disability. And once they determine it, that's how much compensation um, you will get. So let's jump into the topic. Yeah. So degenerative joint disease of the spine is one of the most common claims made by vets and for service-connected disability. That's because back injury is so common during military service. Contrast this with other conditions such as cardiac conditions which rarely affect young soldiers. This severe condition causes many veterans to be unable to work. It is thus surprising that the veterans receive disability ratings of 10 to 20 percent for a back injury but receive much higher ratings and unemployability for conditions like depression, cardiac disease, headaches. The reason for this low rating is based on the history of, of disability rating. The rating dictionary was created before World War I and was based on medical science existing at that time. The VA was very resistant to updates and upgrades of, exist, of the existing ratings index. Recently, the VA added new and modern rating classifications for mental disease and cardiac diseases which conform with the newest accepted classifications by the American Medical Association. But progress in updating the ratings of common muscular systems is slow. More recently, the VA did allow some modifications to, rate, to its rating of degenerative joint disease of the back and the neck. Knowing knowledge of these uh, subtleties involving in, involved in the rating of the condition are important for a success and fair rating of your service-connected disability. Claims involving the spine, both the cervical spine and the uh, thorough lumbar spine, are rated under the same general rating formula. The following spinal conditions are all rated under the same general rating formula. The lumbosacral or cervical strain, which is up here mainly, this would be a diagnostic code assigned to the veteran experience pain in their neck or their upper back. Spinal stenosis is when the space in, spaces in the spine are narrowed and cause pressure on the spinal cord and the nerves. Frequently, spinal stenosis is present in the low back, but it can be present in the cervical spine area as well. But it's diagnostic code 5239. This is a condition that causes one bone in your back or a vertebrae to slide forward over to the bone below it. 
This can result in the spinal cord or nerve roots being squeezed and can cause back pain and numbness, even weakness in one or both legs. An ankylosis is a form of spinal arthritis that causes inflammation of the spinal joints and can result in severe chronic pain. It could also cause inflammation, pain, stiffness in the shoulders, hips, ribs, heels, and small joints of the hands and feet. And that's usually when the arthritis is starting to fuse together. Spinal fusion is a type of surgery that is performed to, to join two or more of the vertebrae together so that there is no more movement between the two vertebrae. This surgery is often performed in individuals with spondyloethis and spinal stenosis. I have to get back on that word. Vertebral fracture or dislocation. A vertebral fracture occurs when a vertebrae becomes compressed due to trauma. Typically, a vertebrae fracture results in symptoms such as limited spinal mobility. Standing, walking will make the pain worse, while lying down on the back makes, it, makes the pain better. A vertebral dislocation is when one of the small vertebrae in the neck is displaced following a traumatic injury to the head or neck. Symptoms of vertebral dislocation include pain, that spread throughout in the shoulders and arms, tingling numbness in the arms, muscle spasms in the neck, and weakness in the arms. Yep, um, so those terms are a little bit uh, confusing, but I hope, I hope that um, Joe's uh, explanations helped you a little bit to understand what those medical terms mean. Yeah. I don't know if you can see pictures behind us, but just look at them as well. Yeah. So, what is that uh, main term? What is ankylosis? Unfavorable is ankylosis is extremely rare in clinical practice. It means that the entire spine, it, spine is in flexation and a person cannot move his spine at all. So, usually what happens is you get that inflammation and over the years you start to get the arthritis and the arthritis starts to fuse. And so, it's not like this, the fusion surgery. This is done naturally and it's not fun. Using the ratings, which are still commonly used, will result in ratings no higher than 30%. Note that even if the veteran is totally unemployable, he cannot file for a total unemployability because his rating is only 30%. So now this guy is only making, say, 380 bucks, and he can't work. It's not going to work out for him very well. Forward flexation of the cervical spine 15 degrees or less, so going up and down like this, of the entire... Uh, or favorable ankylosis of the entire spine will be at 30%. When a veteran's advocate sees a rating for a degenerative joint disease of the spine, he should first make sure that the rating was not based on the rating code listed above, but rather on the rating for interval disc syndrome of 5293. This really relatively new classification allows a rating of 60%, which enables the veteran to file for unemployability. It also allows for consideration of incapacitation due to pain, which is not allowed under the ankylosis classification. In addition, the advocate should explore the possibility of using the rating for nerve damage, specifically sciatic and perineal nerve damage. So what is that new inter, inter IVDS? What yeah. is that? IVDS is a group of signs and symptoms resulting from displacement of an intervertebral, intervertebral disc or disc fragments at any level of the spine. That's a long word. There are usually pain, there is usually pain and other signs and symptoms at or near the side of the disc and there may be pain referred to more remote areas plus neurologic abnormalities due to irritation or pressure on adjacent nerves and nerve roots. IVDS may also be referred to as a slip disc, a herniated disc, a ruptured disc, or degenerative disc disease or sciatica. So there's a good chance you might be getting diagnosed incorrectly. IVDS commonly includes back pain and sciatica pain along the course of the sciatic nerve into the buttocks and the legs, so it's going all the way down. And in the case of the lumbar disc disease, the neck plus arm or hand pain in the case of cervical disc disease. Lumbar IVDS accounts for 62% of all disc diseases, so it's very common, so make sure you're getting rated properly. All but 10% of lumbar IVDS is at the L4, L5, or L5, S1 level. Cervical IVDS accounts for 36% of all disc disease. 
the C6, C7 level is the most common, and the C5, C6 level is the next to most common level for cervical IVDS. IVDS is uncommon in the thoracic area where the spine is less mobile, so right in the middle. Yeah. So, um, so what causes IVDS? So with aging, the disc tends to dry out and shrink, causing the, uh, the fibrosis and your spine to deteriorate and bulge outward, and this becomes a bulging disc. With continued degeneration due to mechanical stress, wear and tear, trauma, inflammation, it may tear and allow the, uh, the nucleus um, pul pulposterous extrude or rupture through the tear in the spinal canal, and this is a ruptured or herniated disc, so now you're starting to really feel it. And, and so when it comes to pain, back pain may be the primary symptom, but the pain in the, distribu in the distribution of the irritated or compressed nerve root may also be primary. However, some people have no back pain at all. There may also be referred back pain in the buttocks, sacroiliac joints, and thighs. Referred pain is pain perceived in an area of the body that is far away from the site of pathology, similar to like a bad tooth. Maybe sciatica, which is sharp, burning, or stabbing pain radiation from your lower back down to the thigh and lower leg, and possibly into the side of the foot, it's due to the S1 or L5. And so you hear a lot of guys talk about a lightning bolt going down their leg. Pain is worse when sitting and standing than when lying down, and coughing, wheezing, bending, or heavy lifting may aggravate the pain. Sensory abnormalities, the exact area of numbness or other abnormal sensations, if any, is determined by the particular nerve, nerve root affected and may be in the inner ankle, the great toe, the heel, the outer ankle, the outer leg, or a combination. The motor abnormality is the weakness or par paralysis depending on the particular nerve root that's affected and may affect ankle upwards or downwards motion or the dorsal flexion of the great toe on the affected side. So then that tr that's when you're talking about like drop foot, things like that. Reflexes, reflexation, there may be abnormal deep tendon reflexes of the knee or ankle, and so see if that's getting affected also. Yeah, so I guess you also can have cervical IVDS, like neck pain. Yeah, and you could definitely get it there, and like what you get there is a lot of pain radiation down the arm. The pain may be sharp, burning, stinging, or stabbing in the arm, elbow, wrist, or fingers depending on the disc site. It is the upper extremity equivalent of the sciatica and the lower extremity. So you got a nerve that goes down both your legs and you got the nerve that's coming down both your arms. This may be referred pain in the upper of the middle back and headaches are common with this. The C5 and C6 may include weakness of the elbow flexation and wrist extension and sensory loss of a lateral forearm, thumb, and lateral part of the index finger, so you guys might be dropping tools or things like that that you never really did. The C6, C7 may, may include pain in the lateral forearm, the thumb, the index finger, weakness in the elbow and wrist, sensory, sensory loss of the long finger, and de decreased tricep reflexes. Yep, so now that we know a little bit about IVDS, what does the examiner um, looking for? So, the main thing is, in order to be related under this rating code, you will undoubtedly be, undoubtedly be required to undergo an examination by the VA examiner. You should also, however, ask your treating physician to detail in his clinical examination in your medical records the pertinent findings, which will then allow your advocate to claim that the, the examination by the VA personnel was inadequate. Straight leg raising, or SLR, is a test done by gently lifting the relaxed extended lower extremity to approximately 90 degrees with the patient lying supine. This stretches the sciatic nerve and reproduces sciatic pain. The normal limit without pain when there is no sciatic nerve abnormality is between 60 and 120 degrees, depending on the patient's age, 
and physical condition. The amount of pain free flexation is less important than the variation between the legs. The SLR, while sensitive, is nonspecific because it may be limited or painful because of tight hamstring muscles, sacroiliac joint pathology, or the radiculopathy. Um, what is that, Les? Oh. Ah, uh, it's here. Yeah. No. Yeah. The, hum the hallmark sign is pain. This may be associated with abnorm abnormal sensations, such as tingling or increased uh, sensitivity. The sign suggesting that you are that you're exaggerating your symptom or malingering. The examiner will also look for evidence that you have been exaggerating your symptoms or you are simply malingering. Be careful not to exaggerate your symptoms. Bottle signs may be interpreted as exaggeration designed to get a higher rating than the actual injury. Injury. They include uh, superficial skin tenderness and light palpitation. Positive when the skin is tender to light touch. Non-atomic pain or tenderness. Positive when there is pain or tenderness extending over a wider area than expected from the nerve pinched. The axle loading or that increases pain, positive if pressing down on the top of the head of a standing patient produces low back pain, positive if passive rotation of shoulders and pelvis to 30 degrees in a standing position causes back pain. Distracted straight leg rise, patient may complain of pain or limitation of motion in a normal SLR test but not when the examiner extends the knee when the patient seated while examining the foot. Such inconsistency is a positive sign. Regional sensory change. Positive if does not correspond to a neuroatomic or dermatomal distribution, stocking, or global distribution of numbness. The regional weakness. With true muscle weakness, there should be a smooth, non-jerky motion when range of motion is resisted positive if there is a sudden letting go of the muscle with a giveaway or breakaway weakness. Overreacting, positive if, it's, if, it, if there is inconsistent hypersensitivity to touch or, or an exaggerated non-producible response such as excessive grimacing, tremors, but cultural and individual differences as well as observer bias may be taken into consideration. The McBride's test patient stands on one leg while rising the opposite knee to the chest. Because the knee is bent, no uh, sciatic stretch occurs and the spine is flexed, which removes pressure. So this should lessen lower back pain. A reported increase in pain or refusal to do the test is a positive sign. The burn test patient is asked to kneel on a chair and touch the floor since the knees are bent. Patients with true back pain or sciatic should be able to do the test without much difficulty. Those with non-organic back pain usually can. Yeah, so those might be signs for doctors to see that you are malingering or something else going on. Yeah. But you shouldn't worry about that when you actually experience some pain. Yeah, just be honest with them and let them know what's going on with you. Yeah. It's the easiest way to make sure everything is done right. And um, as always, you should look at, uh, before going to see in P exam, look at DBQ. Um, benefit, uh, conditions, disability, uh, questions, and uh, to look up for those questions that the doctor definitely uh, will be asking you or why not yeah. check them out. Yeah. So most likely you'll see in the DBQ questionnaire um, questions about uh, back uh, uh, strains in your back, uh, some joint abnormalities, some degenerative disc disease, degenerative scoliosis, uh, like lateral recess, central uh, stenosis, um, some uh, radio, radio callopathy, ankylosis, uh, ankylosing spondylitis of the back. It's like some of those severe terms which would uh, define that something wrong with your back. 
and uh, the doctor will also uh, check your joint movement, uh, uh, forward flexion, like normal endpoint up to 90 degrees, extensions, normal endpoint to 30 degrees, right lateral flexions, normal endpoint to 30 degrees, left lateral flexion, right lateral rotation, and left lateral rotation. So those will be like basic tests that they're going to perform on you. So how is uh, IVDS diagnosed? One, clinical findings are always a significant factor in diagnosis because neurologic imaging studies show positive findings in at least one third of patients who are free of symptoms. Two, x-rays can demonstrate uh, bone alignment and may show decreased disc height, but not due to, but do not show a disc fragment compressing a nerve. They have limited value because the journey of changes are age-related and are equally present in asymptomatic and symptomatic persons. However, they help rule out tumors, infections, and fractures. Most likely, uh, going to VA and complaining about some back pain, you'll get uh, x-ray first. Yeah. And uh, most of the time, actually, especially for younger veterans, uh, x-ray won't show anything. And to get to the second step, so to get your MRI to get tested for, you know, on the CAT scan to do like MRI or CT, CT scan, it's going to take time. Sometimes it can take up to a year. But you can also go to some, maybe not the best advice, but you can go to a private uh, uh, facilities. And there are some here actually in LA where you can do your MRI scan for 300 bucks. I didn't know that until uh, recently because normally you would pay uh, in between something between like 15 to uh, like from 1500 to 2000. Yeah. So it should be like a normal price for most of the hospital. But if you look uh, well, you might find something for 300 bucks. Yeah. Which actually is uh, true uh, for here, for LA area. So what is MRI? Yeah, after after the x-ray, they'll come around and say, oh, we don't see nothing, and then you go for the MRI. And that's the perfect gold standard of visualizing a herniated disc. It can show small tears and atomic details, and it doesn't require any injections. The CT scan would be next, and it's an x-ray taken after Contrast materials is injected into the spinal canal to outline the spinal cord and nerves. Herniated disc fragments or bone spurs compressing the nerves are well visualized, but, it's, but it is inferior to an MRI and soft tissue details. Largely replaced by the MRI, which does not require injections. And then the EMGs are the nerve conductive studies done in selected cases to assess the function of a compressed nerve. So how bad is it affecting you? Yeah, but... In my opinion, EMGs are actually not uh, the best way unless uh, something uh, is really bad going on with your body. So MRI, I would say, and CT scans are the best ones, especially for younger birds. Yeah. And also you can get uh, do uh, discography. That's an injection of contrast material directly into the disc. And it's usually done with CT. But uh, just the name of uh, that procedure doesn't give me any, you know, uh, I wouldn't want to want to do it on myself, especially mm -hmm. when you put something into your disc. Yeah. So how is um, IVDS treated? So the, a lot of it is a conservative therapy. The first line of treatment, unless there is severe nerve involvement, may include or some of these things right here. So limited bed rest for two to seven days, but rarely up to two to four weeks. Physical therapy such as ultrasound, heat or ice, massage, conditioning, exercise programs, traction, electric n nerve stimulation, trigger point injections, weight control, lower back support or braces, and medications such as anti-inflammatory drugs and muscle relaxants. Most patients recover within four, four weeks of onset symptoms, regardless of the type of treatment. Sciatica res resolves in 75% of patients within six months. When conservative th therapy fails, 
which occurs in about 10%, surgery might be needed. And keep in mind, so like if uh, you get rid of uh, that sciatica pain, but you still get uh, uh, back pain, might come back. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I would say most of the time at one point it will come back and it's going to be for most of the people, unfortunately, for life. Yeah. So if you don't get the surgery on your herniated disc, which is also very questionable because with the surgery you can go numb for the rest of your life. Yeah, you're definitely messing with nerves now. Yeah, so most of the time just physical therapy, uh, chiro, acupuncture, yoga if you can, little things Yeah. till the end of your days. <laughs> yeah, but just because your sciatic went away, don't think it's gone forever. Yeah. So what are indications for surgery? Um, some of the indications are progressive neurological um, deficit, severe and disabling pain, the four to six wait weeks with um, with conservative treatment, and cauda and quina syndrome. Don't yeah. quote me on that one. All right, <laughs> me too. <laughs> so, uh, what are common types of surgery? that you don't want to do, but still good to know. Yeah, so common, the traditional one is performed for uh, lumbar with IVDS to relieve pressure on one or more of the nerve roots. The posterior arch of the spine is removed to create more space for the nerve root in order to relieve, to relieve that compression. Part of the disc may be removed as many bone spurs and uh, as may some of the bone spurs and scar tissue if you have that. Laminotomy, uh, which is newer and less invasive type of surgery in which only the small area of the back and surrounding of the affected disc is messed with instead of the whole back being open. This keeps the spine more stable. And the anterior cervical decompression with or without fusion is uh, Surgery, surgery for your cervical spine in which the disc material is removed and the spine may be fused at the level of the abnormal disc. So after surgery, 80 to 85% of patients do well and are able to return to work in about six weeks, but small areas of leg numbness may remain. Mild flare-ups of sciatic pain may occasionally develop, so you're not out of the woods just because you had the surgery. Yeah. hopefully it helps pain a little bit. So the main question, I guess, how is IVDS rated? It's mainly rated in two ways. One is to, is to look for the extent of the incapacitated episodes. The other is to look for objective signs and symptoms of the IVDS, specifically for nerve or orthopedic damage. The Veterans Administration will allow you only the highest rating of the two and does not allow combining of the two to get a higher rating. So the IVDS that is primarily disabling because of periods of acute symptoms that require bed rest according to the cumulative amount of time over the course of a year that the patient is incapacitated requires bed rest and treatment by a physician is evaluated at 60% if the incapacitating episodes are of at least six weeks total in one year. 40% if the episodes are at least four but less than six weeks total. 20% if there's incapacitating episodes of at least two but less than four weeks, and 10% if there are incapacitating episodes of at least one but less than two weeks total. Yeah, so now you see what the difference in between uh, the first rating for the spine, which was 30% for a guy who can't work, and IVDS that can go up to 60%. Yeah. And IVD. DS that is disabling primarily because of the chronic orthopedic uh, manifestations like painful muscle spasms or limitation of motion, chronic neurological manifest manifestations like the foot drop or sensory loss or a combination of both is evaluated by assessing separate evaluations for the orthopedic and neurological manifestations using diagnostic code 5293 with the appropriate orthopedic or neurological codes. When the IVDS is disabling both because of incapa incapa incapacitating episodes and persistent orthopedic or neurological manifestations, whichever alternative method of evaluation results in a higher evaluation is used. 
The great majority of cases will be more favorably evaluated under method B to determine which method results in a higher, higher evaluation. One, calculate the percentage evaluation based on the cum cumulative amount of time over the course of a year that you've been incapa incapa incapacitated and combine with the evaluation for all other service-connected disabilities. Then calculate the percentage evaluation based on the orthopedic and neurological manifestations and combine with the evaluation for all other service-connected disabilities. Compare the two overall evaluations and assign an evaluation for IVDS based on the method that results in the higher evaluation. Yep. So this is just kind of a way so you could try to get that higher percentage so you get that unemployable or make sure that you're getting rated at the proper scale. Yeah, so one of the major uh, notions of those, uh, um, of the difference between ratings is uh, the notion of uh, incapacitating episodes. So what is that? The regulation requires demonstration of periods of acute symptoms that require bed rest. The treatment of back pain by bed rest has been now abandoned. The American College of Physicians and American Pain Society provided the following guidelines for the treatment of back pain. General advice on self-management for nonspecific low back pain should include recommendations to remain active, which is more effective than resting in bed for patients with acute or subacute low back pain. If if patient requires periods of bed rest to relieve severe symptoms, they should be encouraged to return to normal activities as soon as possible. Instead of bed rest, the panel recommended for patients who do not improve with self-care options, clinicians should consider the addition of non-pharmacological therapy with proven benefits for acute low back pain, spinal manipulation for chronic or subacute low back pain, intensive interdisciplinary rehabilitation, exercise therapy, acupuncture, massage therapy, yoga, and cognitive behavioral therapy or progressive relaxation. It appears that even the Veterans Administration accepts this recommendation in, in a training letter to its staff in which, it, in which the VA stated, Conser Conservative therapy, the first line of treatment, unless there is severe nerve involvement, may include or any or all of the following. Limited bed rest two to seven days generally, but can be up to four weeks. Physical therapy, such as ultrasound, heat or ice, and exercise programs. Electrical nerve stimulation, trigger point injections, weight control, medications such as an angelistics, anti-inflammatory drugs, and muscle relaxants. The, yeah. yeah. Yeah, also they would uh, add uh, uh, chiro acupuncture, but I haven't seen uh, yoga or massage uh, approved by the VA. So, and the advocate should argue, therefore, when a veteran's back pain was so severe that it required physical therapy, enhanced uh, drugs, including narcotics and multiple visits to uh, uh, physicians and healthcare providers that the time expended in using these modalities should be equivalent to the bed rest used in the regulation to prove incapacitation. So, which is a little bit sketchier to do it yourself. Yeah. So, and at this point, neither the BVA nor the courts have accepted such arguments. But, um, if you put some pressure from veterans and advocates taking this approach, it will eventually uh, result in acceptance. So your case might be the first one, but it doesn't mean if you don't argue it, you won't get uh, something better from your uh, from your doctor mm -hmm. or from VA. So, and uh, definitely look up at those codes for uh, spine uh, uh, dysfunction like what we've been talking about, like 85, 20, and so on. Yeah, and sciatic nerve is a huge one, so if you guys have back problems, you should look into it. Yep. Um, so, um, so what happened if, um, 
What is appropriate rating for bag visibility? The VA r rating agency routinely, routinely limits its evaluation tool only one rating which is based on the ability of the veteran to bend or extend his back. This is a legal and medical error which you can which you can or the fact uh, that the back disability is not limited to ankylosis but rather causes various symptoms including pain due to the IVDS or the pressure on the nerves causing pain, lack of sensation or reduced strength in the extremities. The analysis of the appropriate rating is based on Bierman versus Brown. Case. Case, yeah. In Beerman, the CAVC held, further in recognizing that a single disease entity may result in separate rating disabilities, the VA's regulation also provide that, except as otherwise provided in the schedule, the disabilities arising from a single diseased entity. Examples are arthritis, multiple sclerosis, cerebral vascular accident, and are to be rated separately as are all other disabling conditions, if any. All disabilities are then to be combined as they describe as described in paragraph A, describing the use of the combined rating table of this section in the 38 CFR 4.25. And the schedule diagnostic code of 5285 and 5295 apply to disabilities of the spine. The 38 CFR 4.71A uh, DC 5285 to 5295 and evaluating a claim based on the IVDS, the schedule provides the following guidelines. Pronounced with persistent symptoms compatible with sciatic neuropathy with characteristic pain and demonstrable muscle spasm, absent ankle jerk or other neurological findings appropriate to the site of, dis of disease disc, little or interme intermediate relief. Is 60. Severe recurring attacks with intermediate relief, 40. Moderate reoccurring attacks, 20. Mild, 10. Post operative, you're cured, you get a zero. Right. <laughs> the 38 CFR 4.71A, the DC 5293. Disabilities of the peripheral nerves are rated under a section of the Schedule entitled Neurological Conditions and Convulsive Disorders, which is the 38 CFR 4.120 to 4.124A, for a claim based upon paralysis of the external uh, popliteal nerve. The schedule provides complete foot drop and slight drop of the first phalanges of all toes cannot dorsal flex the foot extension of uh, proximal phalanges of the toes lost, abduction weakened, and anesthesia con covers entire dorsum of the foot and toes, 40%. Incomplete but severe, 30%, moderates 20, and milds 10. Yeah. There's another case, um, Esteban versus Brown. Uh, so the court uh, held that the critical element of weather separate disability ratings um, permitted is whether the symptomology of each rating is distinct and separate. So in Esteban, the appellant had four scars on his face as a result of the vehicle accident in service and had been assigned 10% uh, disability rating. So the board determined that the appellant's scars might also have been properly evaluated under two additional diagnosis codes. Uh, 804, which is painful scars, or 5325, facial muscle injury, but determined that the appellant was entitled to only one 10% disability rating. So, however, uh, the court found that, in this case, the court found that conditions embodied in a rating under uh, 7800 uh, uh, is entirely cosmetic in nature. Such rating does not contain any component of pain or muscle damage. And the critical element is that none of the symptomology for any of these three conditions is duplicative or overlapping with the symptomology of the other two conditions. So appellant, symptomo appellant symptomology is distinct and separate. Thus, as a matter of law, appellant is entitled to combine his 10% rating for uh, disfigurement under diagnosis code 7800 is an additional 10% rating for tender and painful scars 
under different diagnosis code uh, 7804. And third, 10% rating for facial muscle injury interfering with uh, uh, what, what's chewing. It? Yeah, chewing under code uh, 5325. Uh, so pretty much, uh, uh, I would say, uh, don't give up. Yeah. Don't give up. This one is confusing, <laughs> but don't give up. And uh, yeah, so schedule uh, for disability rating the spine. Definitely, you can find it uh, in a VA schedule for rating of disabilities. And uh, please use uh, the information that we uh, gave you because it might be um, like really helpful. At least now you know where to look for answers. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the main topic and. Um, as always for like our last topic, uh, like that we suggest book and great movie stuff to do. So there is a good movie that came out, Drone, uh, came out just recently. And it's a movie about a guy who is a high level private uh, drone contractor who spends his work days flying uh, covered missions. And then he returns to his family uh, life of suburban, uh, like in suburban area. His family doesn't know what he's doing. And uh, Neil um, just act like a real husband, like a basic, uh, like normal American. But somehow something happens. So one of the Pakistanis uh, tracks him down because somebody put out an information about him. So, and it, the whole thing, uh, beautiful lives turns into drama. Mm-hmm. Well, and as always called uh, Poets of Wisdom of the Day, Get there first with the most. Yep. Nathan Bedford Forest. That's it, folks. Thanks you for listening. Until next time. Over and out. Thank you.